Ladies and gentlemen, the opening ceremony of the Horaces HME team will now begin. First of all, Frank Richter, Chairman of Horaces. Dr. Richter, please. Your Excellency, Mr. Akihiro Nishimura, Mr. Minister of the Environment, Minister, Mr. Kenshi Kitahashi, Mayor of Kita Kyushu, Mr. Hiroshi Komiyama, President Kita Kyushu Asian Center for Low Carbon Society. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm delighted to speak to you today, opening the Horasis Asia meeting here in the beautiful city of Kita Kyushu. Delegates will discuss how to shape the path forward through Asia's big transitions and how to adapt innovation to build towards a resilient post-COVID Asia. The Horasis Asia meeting, ladies and gentlemen, will particularly focus on Japan's efforts to revitalize its economy and highlight the respective positive impact on the whole region here in Asia. The city of Kitakyushu, ladies and gentlemen, is widely regarded as a role model of successful economic transformation and shift towards green and sustainable growth. Ladies and gentlemen, I lived in Japan a long time ago, for two years as a student. I'm very attached to this country. I like its fascinating and colorful culture. The country is a blend of Eastern traditions and Western modernity, built upon a very prolific history. Japan is an economic powerhouse, boasting the third largest GDP in the world. Despite maintaining its deep-rooted traditions, Japan established itself as a pioneer when it comes to innovation. Most of Japan's technological advancements can be considered as solutions to problems that the country and the people are facing. As one of the first countries to invest in innovation early on, Japan understands the importance and benefits that technology can provide. We see it now again, ladies and gentlemen. Japan is a leader to curb climate change through innovation and breakthroughs. And Japan is very committed to realize the SDGs. Japan's transition towards a Korean society is the main theme of the summit, the Horasis Asia meeting. I wish you very inspiring conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Richter. The mayor of Kitakyushu, Kenji Kitahashi, will now address the meeting on behalf of the city of Kitakyushu. Mayor Kitahashi, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the city of Kitakyushu, welcome to the Horasis Asia meeting. I would also like to extend another warm welcome to Chairman Richter and everyone here today. I find it very meaningful that so many globally-minded business leaders have come together in Kitakyushu to engage in spirited discussions on future trends in Asia. Today, the world is becoming more globalized. This has created many threats and challenges that must be resolved by the entire international community. These include the ongoing spread of COVID-19, efforts to realize a decarbonized society, and restructuring of supply chains. Solving environmental challenges is key to ensuring that Asia's rapid economic development is sustainable. Kitakyushu is proving to be successful in balancing industrial development while rising above environmental pollution. We were one of the first cities in Japan to start international environmental cooperation activities in the 1980s in Asia using the technology and know-how developed over this process. We have helped 
implement a composting project with the public in Surabaya, Indonesia. An organic waste which accounts for 50% of all waste in the city. The project has been successful in reducing the amount of waste by 32%. We have dispatched city officials as experts to help identify solutions to water problem in Phnom Penh in the Kingdom of Cambodia. Today, Phnom Penh supplies water around the clock. The city has reached a 90% water supply coverage rate and reduced leakage and water theft rates to 8%. In this dramatic improvement that is referred to as a Phnom Penh miracle, the government has also declared that tap water in the city is now drinkable. An advanced water purification facility was built in high form in Vietnam using one of Kita Kyushu's patented technologies. This technology uses the natural purification actions of microorganisms in rivers, reducing construction costs by half and running costs by one twentieth. We also teamed up with a major local company to build a plant in Serandor, Malaysia, to recycle sludge and incinerator ash into alternative cement materials and fuel. These high quality technologies, though, are not necessarily expensive, nor are they ultra modern. People in Kitakyushu are good at what they do, transferring technology and know how best suited to the challenges and socioeconomic conditions of a country or region. To date, about 100 businesses have been established through Kitakyushu City, worth about 230 million US dollars. I would like to direct my next remarks in particular to the investors who have come to Kitakyushu today. Kitakyushu has a potential to contribute to environmental business investment in Asia. These areas cover global warming measures, waste management, resource recycling, air and water quality improvement, and energy. We would be honored for you to use our proven capabilities as a way to significantly expand your own business ventures. Lastly, I would like to thank you for coming all the way to Kitakyushu and wish you all the best at this year's Horasis Asia meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, on behalf of the government of Japan, we have a welcome message from Akihiro Nishimura, Minister of the Environment. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at the screen. アジアの経済成長の同時実現に向けてグリーン
国民運動を指導いたしました今後さらに官民連携によるライフスタイルイノベーションを推進してまいりますパリ協定に定める 1.5 度目標の達成に向けましては途上国をはじめ世界全体での実効的な排出削減が不可欠ですアジアにおいてカーボンニュートラルを達成するためには2050年までに累計で約40兆ドルの資金需要があるとの試算もございますカーボンニュートラルの実現に必要となる民間資金の拡大のためにはパリ協定6条に定める市場メカニズムの活用が鍵となります質の高い炭素市場を構築するための6条実施パートナーシップを先週 COP27 において立ち上げました今後各国と協力してパリ協定6条の活用を進めてまいりますさて北九州市は SDGs 未来都市として郊外を乗り越えた経験ものづくりの技術などの強みを生かし日本が直面する課題に他の都市に先駆けて取り組んでこられておられます具体的には洋上風力発電関連産業の総合拠点化市内の公共施設やリサイクル企業による再エネ導入の最大化国内最大級のリサイクル団地における資源循環産業の創出拡大に力を入れておられますこれらはまさにグリーントランスフォーメーションを体現する取り組みと考えていますさらに北九州市はベトナムハイフォン市のグリーン成長推進計画の策定支援など国際的な都市間連携事業に取り組まれており世界の都市の気候高度を牽引されておられます環境省としても北九州市と連携して国内外の脱炭素化を一層推進してまいります結びにこのイベントがアジアの持続可能な発展につながることを記念いたしまして私からの挨拶とさせていただきます Thank you very much. The Horaces Asia meeting will now open with a keynote speech by Hiroshi Komiyama, Chairman of the Institute, Mitsubishi Research Institute, Inc., former President of the University of Tokyo and President of Kita Kyushu Asian Center for Low Carbon Society. Mr. Komiyama, please. Good morning,、uh, colleagues and friends. I am very honored and pleased to present a keynote address here today. Ever since our ancestors emerged out of Africa 200,000 years ago, humankind has spread. Across the globe, flourished as a species, and developed civilizations throughout the long history. We now encounter very basic situations characterizing the 21st century. First, human activities have grown enormously in scale. The enormous amount of man made o b j e c t Now, cover the Earth's surface, already overtaking the amount of natural o b j e c t In the future, if people dug down into the layer of the Earth for this era, they would find fossils of artificial substances. Geologists have termed this the Anthropocene. And It is not just about artificial objects. As much as one third of carbon dioxide in the air is due to human activities. Fixation of nitrogen in the air has dramatically changed thanks to the Harbor Bosch process. The volume of artificial fixation has increased to a level comparable. To natural fixation. 
there is no doubt that humanity have had the greatest impact on changes to the earth. Second, humans are living longer. In most part of our history, human lives were much shorter. Even at the beginning of the 20th century, the average lifespan was 31 years. Nowadays, it has reached to 73 years. Our ancestors could only dream of longevity. Now it has become a reality. It is the proof of the success of civilization. Thirdly, humans have accumulated a tremendous amount of knowledge, particularly since 20th century. Knowledge is the key to resolving our issues. I believe that virtually all issues can be resolved if the right knowledge is appropriately mobilized. Take the COVID pandemic as an example. Who would have thought that an effective vaccine could have been developed in such a short time? With these three basic conditions that we encounter for the first time in our history, humankind faces many issues governing the future of our lives and our society. That is the reality of today. Saturation is a key word to understand today. This red line shows the accumulation of iron in Japan in the form of buildings and automobiles. Half a century ago, there was very little amount of iron in Japanese society. During the period of rapid economic growth, iron accumulated and reached its peak. Namely, iron became socially saturated. This saturation occurred at 10 tons per person, about 10 tons per iron per person. In China, iron accumulation has already reached 10 tons per person. So, iron is almost saturated in China too. By 2050, iron is expected to be saturated in most countries around the world. What will happen when the world becomes saturated with iron? Saturation occurs when the same amounts of man-made objects are scrapped as newly produced. Thus, when saturation is reached, scrap iron will provide a sufficient amount of iron. As a result, iron mines will close. While quantitatively scrap is sufficient, how is the quality of steels made from scraps? Generally speaking, how to prevent quality deterioration by recycling is a big challenge. Technology is, however, being developed very rapidly. There are steel recycling cars running on the F1 circuit. Also, there is a community, oh, sorry, there is a company that has succeeded in supplying the most demanding parts for the Shinkansen bullet train by recycling aluminum alloys. Basically, horizontal recycling is possible if scrap is sorted by composition. Digital technology will help this. 
This means that our civilization shifts from excavation of natural mines to circulation of urban mines. We are now living at a turning point in our civilization. Metal supplies will change from mines to urban mines. Energy is changing from fossil resources to renewable energy. Biological resource resources will increase in importance. At this turning point in our civilization, we will need a vision to aim for. I propose a vision of platinum society, which is the earth is sustainable, prosperous, and enables every person with self-realization. We take action to make it happen. More than a decade ago, I founded the Platinum Society Network. It began as a very small organization uh, with this Kitakyushu city as a starting member. Now, it includes more than 200 municipalities and 120 businesses. Our activities are very diverse, health, energy, environment, tourism, human capital, primary industries, and so on. We are doing whatever we can do, only if it moves toward a platinum society. Today, I will show you just two examples. In the future, due to the requirement of zero emission of carbon dioxide, many things that are made from petroleum now will be made from biomass. This means that petrochemistry will be replaced by biomass chemistry. A candidate for biomass that does not compete with food would be wood, trees. More than two, thing, two thirds of Japan's land is covered with forests. We are trying to create a forest industry, including biomass chemistry, renewable energy, tourism, and entertainment. We intend to mobilize the most advanced all encompassing science and technology to make it happen. But moving the existing society we live now is a daunting task. In particular, I must say, Japan has a long history and doesn't move with ease. But after more than 10 years of hard effort, we are finally, right now, starting our Platinum Forest Industry Initiative. In another 10 years, I would like to transform Japan into a country that can supply materials from trees, energy from renewable resources, and beautiful forests that can attract people through ecology, and entertainment. This is another example. When people work together with a shared purpose, a community is created. In the past of our history, humanity shared the purpose of producing food and goods to create a community. From now on, health will be one of the common purposes, I believe. Hirosaki University in Aomori Prefecture, located at the northern part of Japan, has been collecting health data from 1,000 citizens each year. 
as many as 3,000 items per person for 16 years already. This big data is very powerful. For example, it can predict whether a person will develop diabetes in three years with a correlation coefficient of 0 0.93, namely almost with certainty. To use and further enhance this big data, 16 companies have created endowed chair, endowed academic chairs at Hirosaki University. We are now trying to expand this Hirosaki project of health to all over Japan. And furthermore, it has begun in Haiphong City, Vietnam. Invaluable big data for health industry will be produced. Let's work together to create a healthy world in the future. Colleagues and friends, we are the ones, the only ones, I believe, who can create the future of the earth, the future of our society, and the future of people. Let us take action for our bright future. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much. We will move to the ribbon cutting ceremony. Please come to the stage when your name is called. Before you come to the stage, please leave your simultaneous interpretation receiver and take off your mask. So Dr. Frank Jürgen Richter, Chairman of Horaces. <laughs> Mr. Kenji Kitahashi, Mayor of Kitakyushu. Mr. Ken Ichiro Takaki, Chairman of Kitakyushu City Assembly. <laughs> Mr. Girish Ramachandran, President of Tata Consultancy Services, Asia Pacific PTA Limited. Mr. Murat Senesovov, Chairman of Caspian Week Forum. <laughs> Mr. Hiroshi Komiyama, President of Hitakyushu Agent Center for Low Carbon Society. Mr. Ikuya Yamamoto, President of Kitakyushu International Techno Cooperative Association. <laughs> Mr. Christian Schumis, Founder of Purpose Driven Innovation Ecosystem.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, please take your tapes and get ready. The Horaces Asia meeting is opening. Ribbon cutting, please. We will now take a commemorative photograph. それではこれより写真撮影を行います。皆様どうぞもう一歩前へお進みください。Please step forward a little bit. もしよろしければ皆さんもう少し近くに寄っていただけますでしょうか。Everyone, please come to a little closer to the center. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes the grand opening of Horaces Asia meeting. The plenary session will now commence. Please wait for a while until we are ready. <laughs> 